All right, guys, welcome back to One Giant's Garage. Sorry about my voice again. It's going to be a rough one today. So today we are working on the two-pig toe pig. I got a couple things I've been putting off I've been wanting to do. We are going to install this flush mount splitter. What this does, takes your plug-in you normally use for the block heater, powers the block heater through this one, and we're going to use the other plug for uh, battery charger main painter. That way anytime the block heater is plugged in, we get a little trickle of juice, keep the batteries topped up in the winter. And we are also going to mount just a quick attach for uh, jumper cables. All this stuff off Amazon. Uh, I have the same setup on the skid loader. That way if something else dies or if this dies makes it way easier to hook cables up to it uh, the skid loader stuff you gotta open the back door to get the batteries so this makes things way easier so that's what we're gonna do now I'll get you set up and we'll get going so the first thing we're gonna want to do anytime you're working with electrical unhook both batteries this truck happens to be eight millimeters and start with both your negatives first, do it safe, and then do both your positives. Next step in the process, gotta figure out where we want our maintainer to sit. I think I'm gonna go with it right about here. It's down below the level of the intake. I've got plenty of clearance on the hood right up top where I can get at it. Uh, this here is just a cover that goes over the battery. Uh, so it's not any like critical part. This thing weighs like a quarter pound. So we're not doing any structural attachment here. The cord's going to get fished down through here. Now this truck has a boatload of added on accessories, electric fans, uh, air compressor for the helper springs in the back, yada yada yada, so I got a lot of extra wires up here to deal with. But what we'll do is we'll actually fish this wire down through here, and it'll meet up with a plug coming up from the bottom, so. Looks like a pretty good spot. Get our old handy dandy. Bring that marker out here. So I'm gonna mark these, and then I'm actually gonna take this off the truck to attach it just to make sure I don't run into any clearance issues or anything. We're hooking it to the truck, screwing it down. All we're going to use is there we go, there it is, number eight Phillips head stainless steel screws, probably not more than half inch or so. It's not a heavy structural component, so that'll be plenty. I'm only using stainless steel because that's what I need. Run what you run. That's how we do it around here. So we'll get this bunch snapped and off. So that's all that is under there. And all that's under there is the handle. So we're not too worried about poking in anything important. So we need our. There's the other one. And that bad boy. Now it's secure. You can see they poke through just a little bit. All that's going to be doing is touching the top of this handle right here. Not even going to get down into the battery, so we got plenty of 
plenty of room, nothing to worry about. Man, just snap the bag down. All right, now we can fish. here so when they added on all this other stuff they put these ground taps on so I am going to pull these off and clean them up a little bit because while we got it up and off we might as well get all the electrical cleaned up Always remember, clean electrical is happy electrical. This part of the hookup is pretty simple. Just ground to ground and positive to positive. Now I can already hear the complaints in the comments that, oh, it should be hooked on this battery or that battery. The reality is, given it's just a one and a half amp maintainer, once these two batteries are hooked together, it's a whole electrical system, so it doesn't matter if you hook it to this battery, that battery, or to the positive wire down, wire down on a starter. It's all going to do the same thing. So, whichever spot is easiest for your truck, that is out of the way. Whoop! You look how rusty all that is. So whatever you got that's out of the way and makes it work, run more. So I'm going to clean all this up. And I'll bring you right back. All right, now because I have an open tap on this ground, I'm only using one so far. I'm actually going to take the ring terminal off of here and go with a uh, what is the other end of the space, whatever that's called. I think they just call it a female quick connect or whatever. So we'll cut that off, crimp this on, and get the negative side up touch. I intentionally try to leave these wires as long as I can. Because there's no telling down the road. I might want to pull this out or put it in a different vehicle or move the mount around or something. I used to cut everything right exact as far as close as it could be, but then I found I moved stuff around quite a bit, so better leave it a little bit longer. There ain't much extra to work through with anyway, so find your appropriate blue 16-14 cut section. Give it a little squeeze. A little push to test your out. And then heat source. I really like these heat shrink connectors myself. Probably doesn't matter what we're doing, but get that a little hot. But I think it's just a little little extra insurance. That and that. Now we need some. Now when you take this off. So with this one, I can either attach this ring. This ring is way too big for starters. I think I'll attach it right to here. Kind of like I did with this other one. See if we have an appropriate size 
Like these multi packs, the only problem is the size that is the most common that you use the most. Typically run out of too soon. I don't know, hook would work. Hook that would do. So we'll put this little hook on this one. That way we won't have to back that quite all the way out. Because again, remember we're talking. 1.5 amp main tanger. We're not putting a 50 or 60 amp start load through this. So. It'll be fine. Everything's fine. Right to it. Keep these only 14 or 16 gauge wires in an M14. Find our little torch. I got a hot air one on my side of reward station that does a pretty good job too, but that is over in the radio shop. Again, run what you run what you're doing. One thing I do not have for this whole setup that I'll have to go back and add on afterwards is I can only imagine I should have. some sort of a fuse in here. This is built as a fully automatic setup. So I assume there's some kind of protection in here. Um, or tell them. So we'll see. I'll probably get like a little five amp fuse or something to stick in there at some point. I am fresh out of fuse holders. I just used my last one for the electric lift pump install on the skid motor, so I'm just gonna have to wait. Which right. go find me some uh, dielectric grease, and I'll be right back. All right, point of contention time. When it comes to dielectric grease, everybody has their own opinion. Some people coat the terminals with it on the batteries. Put the cables on, tighten it down. Some people put the terminals on and then coat the tops with it. However you want to do it, uh, feel free to discuss in the comments while I am taking this time to clean up the positive terminal and reassemble. You don't know fire shoot hammer.
Now, whichever way you decide to do it, I don't care. Just make sure you clean your terminals out before you reassemble them. Uh, my wife has a 2007 Escalade ESV, and the whole thing shut down, dash wouldn't work. I mean, it was just, everything quit. And it turns out there was a ground strap that ran from the motor to the firewall that was slightly corroded and the battery terminal was slightly corroded, the ground was. So it lost ground, the computer stopped talking to itself. Cleaned up the ground post on her batteries over in that corner, added in auxiliary ground strap, same spot, worked like brand new. So, however you use your dielectric grease, just make sure you clean the post. If you don't want to use any dielectric grease, don't, just clean your post. The moral of the story is clean your post. All right, so what we're gonna do next, is we're gonna move over to this side, and we're gonna start putting a quick detach for our jumper cables in. So because this grill is in horrible shape, kinda like the bumper, we are going to mount this basically right in here somewhere. I'm not quite sure yet. Um, it'll sit like this obviously but kind of tuck back in just a little bit probably pop this we're gonna pop the grill out and i'll pop this insert out and see how i can get that to fit but not too worried about it like i said it's a junk grill anyway so it is just the toe pig and she is made to work we're not worried about her looking shiny so i'll set you guys up what we got to take this grill off we got four number two phillips head screws up here and then down here, it's hard to see them, but you got a couple clips just hold the bottom in. So, get set up and we'll get her tore apart. I like to leave one end up there. That way, once you pull the clips out, you got something holding the grill up so it doesn't just fall down on your head. you can see I've got an additional electric fan on here, cooling, an auxiliary transmission cooler, plus it draws air, extra air through, you know, regular radiator condenser. So normally you would have four of these clips, but because the original fabricating company cut out this chunk for the fan, your other two clips would be right here. So, you kind of see where they were set. So, let's get this laid out to the side. How we're going to do this, I may just attach it to that right there. That's a pretty solid, pretty solid mount. That's the worst tripod ever. That way, this can sit. Yeah. 
I said it this way, you know, the contact is protected inside here, and when you slide it all together, it's going to work just fine. So, yeah. Some contemplating. I might just need to leave it to you. Not really go anywhere. Just sitting out here like that. I'll figure out. Figure out. I'll bring you guys right back. All right. So I think what I've settled on is I'm just going to kind of run it through here. Do something to kind of tie it down there a little bit. I don't want to do too much odd stuff because like I said this would be temporary. I gotta get a different grill anyway, so I gotta be easy to just find a way to bungee it down or something so it doesn't look quite so thrown down and silly. But do that. I'm also going to open this up just a little bit. The wires fit through there, but it's kind of rougher on the other side, so handy dandy diagram it and make the hole a little bit Just to keep it tucked in on the way. Yeah, we're gonna match after the last one. The reason my voice sounds like this is doing stuff like that without a mask on. You should have some kind of respirator. Main reason was when I poured that little tiny pad right there, did it without a respirator or mask on. That sucking in 20 bags of concrete worth of dust as I was mixing it. So now I am paying the dumb dumb tax for probably the next couple weeks while this clears itself up. So, if it ever does. That's where we're at right now. Now we're going to work on making the connections. So the positive, I want to around everything you got going on down here. Positive would be pretty easy. Just gonna attach right there. The negative. What we're gonna do is we're gonna drill a hole in this ground strap just to annoy people. So this bolt's gonna be sticking up through here like this, and then this ground will actually bolt right there. Let me go find an appropriately sized drill. And then we're also going to grind probably half of the head of that bolt down just for clearance because it's not a high torque application anyway. I just wanted the thickness of the bolt because it matches the hole in the wire. So I'm going to drill a hole in that, grind half that head off, and then bolt it all together. I'll be right back. All right, so here's the culmination of that effort. Well, it is pretty basic. Just a smaller head on that bolt. Got a nylon lock nut on it. So when you thread her all down, it should be nice and tight. So let's throw her back on and move on to the next. Oh, that's my first. going to take our brush brush clean it up just a little bit. And I'm going to 
brass brush for two years. Time to grab any dead and steel one. That is what we call a full sand scenario right there. So we're going to pass that bolt through there. There we go. I'm going to bring this wire in from this side. No real reason. such a big truck there is a tremendous lack of real estate under the hood. I don't even know if they still make these, but this is like my favorite ratchet in the whole garage. It's got a quarter inch on one side, three eighths on the other. It just makes things easy. diminish the current carrying capacity of that. I doubt it. It's pretty a snub fit, so I think it'll be just fine. Alright, so now we just need to get that off. Believe it or not, I have an elusive 10 millimeter socket. It's a collector's item. It would not have hurt to hit that with a little bit of concrete and all, but whatever. We're here now. Look at this, I'm kind of glad I'm doing this because there's quite a bit of erosion. I do cut the round off here. Anytime you got electrical hookups like these apart, it's an excellent idea. Give them a quick brush up. You know, that would be crazy. Just want to clean it up a little bit. That. That. That's.
not gonna go too crazy with that. I don't want to bust that little tiny stud off there. <clears throat> so now all these connections are made. All these connections are made. That thing's flopping in the wind. So let us put this positive cable back on. Let's get our highly controversial dielectric grease. A little bit of sealing up here. Might help, may not. I got it, so doesn't cost me anything to give it a little feel good insurance. You guys make sure you put in the comments if you think it works or not. Not saying I'll change anything, but give everybody something to talk about. So now with this whole little project we are all done with the battery electrical connection part of it. So what we can do now Actually, hook our negative back up. I'll do this both ways just so everybody feels like they got a feel like they got equal representation. So I know you can't see it, but if you did put if you did shave the head on this a little bit. Um, it is actually not touching the top of the case, so for anyone who is gravely concerned about that, rest assured. squeezing onto the grease, it's actually shaving the grease down and then you're tightening it down. So.
take care of everything up here so what I have to do now is I actually have to drive to Harbor Creek because I need a two inch hole saw to drill the hole for that right there it will be instantaneous for you guys but I will be Travel there, travel back, and we'll keep on going. Alright, guys, back from Harbor Freight. Got our handy dandy brand new Hercules two inch hole saw. We need it for one hole, so it'll be fine. Also, picked up one of their all battery powered shop backs and light. I'm sure you guys saw in a previous video. Um, these are these Hypermax. Are super easy to convert to DeWalt batteries and since I already had a whole DeWalt set there was no need to buy a whole nother set of batteries because I mean this was like 50 bucks that was like 12 something like that to get probably the same version of this in DeWalt I mean you'd be paying a couple two three hundred bucks so you know same with uh, the light I think the DeWalt light's like 50 or 60 bucks, something like that. So I already did it with the grease gun, cordless grease gun, which is fine. So I can do the same with these. Um, I don't think I'll do a video because it's kind of the same thing. I might do it just because it might come apart a little bit different. All you got to do is get at this where the battery hooks up right here. Uh, but we'll see. Maybe I won't do it until I get my voice back if it ever comes back. So in the meantime, what we're going to do is use the a saw to drill a hole in the a bumper. And you can see why I don't set any bumpers, you know, destroyed. So, at this point, it doesn't matter. So, we're going to drill a hole, mount our plugs, and yeah, get it going. All right, I'll get the head set up. All right, this is not going to be super precise because, again, it doesn't matter. All we're looking for is a place to plug our cord in because currently, this is a block heater plug. It just hangs over the leaf spring back here. So that was the whole inspiration for this. And then I happen to see on one of my uh, Super Duty groups that uh, another member had mounted this dual plug. Um, and he kind of did the same thing. Uh, put like a battery maintainer. That's kind of where I got the idea for the whole ordeal. So now we just need a bunch of hole. Hopefully this does it. Precision indeed. Full time. Perfect. Yeah. Look how rusty that is. Gross. Alright, so now go find my deeper tool. Or a little file. Go somewhere. wasteland of tools I have an actual deburring tool you can just go you know if I bought it for stuff like this the problem with being disorganized you can't find nothing <laughs> couple little marks but that's why you want the deburring tool Then take this, pass your plugs through here. Kind of decide how you want it to sit. Because the idea is here. Comes with some cell tappers.
still a pig, which I'm not a big fan of, but whatever. Run what you brown, right? So kind of get her sitting clock how you want it. Again, for what we're doing doesn't really matter. so it ain't got to be too crazy. Literally just holding your plug. Now, you couldn't see that, but I got those plugged in together. Definitely should have left the safety glasses on for that purpose, but whatever. into that maintainer right there. So now we need to find a cord to test our little system with. I'm gonna get this one. to buy new property little trick find all your plugs and switches and whatnot label them with what circuit they're on makes life way easier so now in theory we plug this into this we should get everything to work Plug in. It doesn't work. This will be the second shoe using product I've had that did not work. All right. 
I was trying to get so what had happened was the plug come undone so if this works then I'm going to tape them together that way they don't fall apart contact hey we got lights what's that mean solid red light I don't know. Oh, it's charging. Cool. So, everything works. Heard pop and sizzle. So, no block heaters working. And it's over here. I put a multimeter on it. So, we know that that is hooked up. Now, if you do do something like this, you need to understand there is no fuse. This is no different than your main battery cables right here. So if this comes into contact, that's why it's all surrounded by plastic. But if this comes into contact with a metal part of your truck, it will burn it to your right. That is why they don't put these on, you know, just everybody's cars. So come keep in mind, keep it covered, keep it safe. Uh, I'll either put, they got a cover on the other end. I'll either put that on or I might even just put just a little piece of duct tape over top of it. Something to keep it covered or nothing. I mean, the other thing is right here, where one reason I put it here, all this is plastic, so there's nothing to short out against. So, all right, guys, so that's the story. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you got any questions, leave them down in the comments. Hit the like button, hit the dislike, whatever. Um, stay tuned because I will probably do a modification video on that. So, till I see you guys again, keep her full send.